Hello, thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar for March. Um, we're going to be going over choosing the right electric floor heating for your subfloor. So I am Lynn, I'm a customer service representative here at Warmly Yours, and today I am joined by... Anatoly, I'm with uh, Warmly Yours technical support and product team. Awesome, and we're gonna jump right in. Um, if you have any questions on the presentation, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, do so either in the sidebar chat or at the bottom of the screen in the ask a question module. Um, if we don't see your question right away, we'll definitely get to it by the end of the presentation. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about um, some electric floor heating, kind of some basics, and especially um, how to really get your project started off on the right foot. So we're going to go over um, kind of a general intro to electric floor heating, and then we're also going to be going over the requirements for whatever subfloor you'll be installing over. At the end, we're also going to show you some installation examples so you can really picture exactly what we're talking about. So there are a lot of benefits to electric floor heating. One is that it's incredibly energy efficient uh, when compared to a traditional forced air heating system like you're most likely used to. Um, it's going to be more efficient because it's going to be a very quick way to heat up a space as well as you can zone your heat. So you only have to be heating where and when you need it. It also reduces air movement. Um, there's not air blowing around, so it's reducing allergens, dust, and pollutants within the house. And if you're going to already be, you know, building a new house, replacing a floor or something like that, it's a very easy way to add a little bit of extra comfort and luxury in that space. So we're going to be going over our different systems. These are temp zone, uh, environ, and in slab heating. So Anatoly, can you kind of tell us what the different subfloor materials, you know, how they affect the job? Yeah, so uh, we're going to be talking today mainly, of course, about, you know, your kind of more typical wood subfloor uh, and, of course, about concrete subfloor. So uh, the main uh, difference is, of course, anytime you're working over a concrete subfloor, you would uh, always want to sort of separate your floor heating from that concrete subfloor because it's going to absorb a lot of heat and kind of uh, decrease the efficiency of your system. So uh, future in the, uh, into the slides, we're gonna be talking about the thermal barrier that we provide for those. And then of course, when it comes to the wood subfloors, it's important to always ensure that that subfloor is leveled, it's uh, uh, ready to receive the specific type of flooring you're planning to use. So in other words, just make sure it's structurally sound for the flooring you're gonna be using. Perfect, awesome. So um, can you also kind of go over some of the installation methods? I know that we, you know, we have two different types of installation generally. You're going to either embed the heat or you're going to float the heat. Can you kind of tell us, you know, which comes into play when? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I like to always point out that uh, with our embedded type systems, which uh, well, we're going to cover more in details in just a couple of slides, uh, those uh, type of systems are virtually then ready to receive any flooring just because you uh, embed the system, you have a nice uh, leveled surface. You know, if you embed it with a self-leveling cement, you're just gonna have nice leveled cement on top of it. And then again, virtually you can bring another contractor a week later and, and they will not even know that floor heating is there. So once again, you can install virtually any flooring on top of this. For uh, specifically floating uh, flooring types like uh, laminate, floating wood, or carpet in the United States, uh, we have another product uh, that just needs to be floated. The simple explanation of that process would be where you just install the underlayment down first, float that, uh, then float your heating system uh, and float the flooring on top. Uh, one thing I probably want to point out uh, right now, and we will talk about this again a couple of times in the slides today, is that the floating vinyl flooring would not be the applicable uh, flooring to be used with that. You would still use the vinyl flooring with our embedded systems. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. I think it's really common to have, you know, kind of some confusion around laminate and vinyl. I think the terms are often used interchangeably, yep. even when they are technically different materials. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, aware of specifically what kind of product you're putting down. 
Um, so kind of on that same note, um, you want to make sure that you're talking to the flooring manufacturer. So you want to see if they have requirements when pairing their product with electric floor heating. Often it will be something like a heat limitation, like you, they don't want you to go over maybe 82, 84 degrees Fahrenheit, or there'll be something like a requirement for the amount of space needed between the floor itself and the heating of products. And this generally only applies to certain flooring materials, usually things like laminate, LVT, engineered or nailed down wood um, are probably the most common to have these uh, requirements or limitations, you know, things to keep in mind. Things like tile generally don't have that as much. Yeah, one thing I can probably add here real quick is that uh, we were talking about laminate, you know, floating laminate you would uh, usually use or 99% of the time you would use with one of our floating systems. However, there might be some uh, laminate manufacturers that specifically will want, uh, will want their systems to be installed over embedded heating systems, meaning that you cannot install it over uh, just directly over a floating uh, environment type system. So again, temperature is one thing like Lynn pointed out, but also make sure you are fully familiar with the installation method that your particular flooring company uh, requires you to follow. Absolutely. Uh, so can you kind of tell us how you would be determining which heating system? I know we kind of talked about, you know, requirements and things like that, or kind of some general tips, uh, you know, things like vinyl, usually, you know, we'll yep. you'll need to have it over something embedded. So can you kind of tell us how to pick your system? Yeah, so that's, this slide really now just opens up for us uh, the uh, actual names of the products, right? In in a two previous or in a, in a slide before, we were talking about embedded system and floating system. So here you can pretty much see temp zone system is your uh, system that will always needs to be embedded. And we have that type of product uh, available in rolls, in flex rolls, we call them, in easy mats, which are just kind of like standard mat sizes, custom mats, and also the cable for uh, some specific customization. Uh, and once again, that's a system that always needs to be embedded no matter what. And then environment product is uh, available in rolls and easy mats, which are again, more standard rectangular size mats. And this is for floating uh, floors and the actual heating element will be floated as well. So as you uh, probably just remember from a previous slide, those would be compatible with the floating laminate, floating wood, or with the uh, wall-to-wall carpets in United States only. Perfect. So looking at subfloors and your different heating options. Um, so if you're going over a wood subfloor with a system that's going to be embedded, um, you wanna make sure that the subfloor is prepared properly. You wanna make sure A, that it's going to be, um, you know, completely level and clear first and that any gaps or holes are filled in and sealed. If you're pouring something like a self-leveling cement, it's going to find any holes, you know, cracks in the floor and cause some damage like that. So you want to make sure that you're really preparing that subfloor, priming it, filling any holes and making sure you're good to go. Yeah. And another big thing about the wood subfloors or generally about really any subfloor is when you're going to be working with the self-leveling cement, um, one can uh, decide to install the heating system and then apply the self-leveling, which is correct process but also use the self-leveling to actually level that existing floor. And that's not gonna be the right process to follow because uh, you will end up having, if, especially if the floor is unleveled, you will end up having more material in one uh, area of the floor, less material in another area of the floor. And as a result, you may end up with a pretty uneven heat. So in those cases, anytime you need to actually level the floor first, you would want to apply the self-leveling first, prepare, level your floor, only then start, uh, or I should say proceed with your floor heating uh, system installation. Awesome. Yeah, those are some important tips to keep in mind. 
So when you're looking at um, a tile job where you're going to be installing tile as your final flooring, um, you can see this is a pretty good um, cross section. We have a, quite a few of these that we're going to be going over today, showing the different layers and steps of each process. So starting with a wood subfloor, again, making sure to prepare that, and then you'll lay out your heat and you'll either use, um, you know, the rolls where you'll cut and turn it or those loose cables where you'll attach them using fixing strips. And then from there, you would use thin set and that tile floor. Now can you kind of talk to us about some about shower heating and what specifically that entails? Yeah for sure. So in addition to those embedded systems we just mentioned, uh, we also have a temp zone uh, shower mats uh, systems or I should say mats for uh, benches and the shower floors. So virtually it's the same product, same type of mesh with a pre-attached wire to it. Uh, the main difference, of course, that those mats are already designed for your standard shower sizes or standard bench sizes. So the installation uh, process is very simple. But uh, anytime we're talking about the shower uh, floor heating, uh, you would typically start with uh, some kind of pan uh, that is uh, pre-sloped and you would want to install some waterproofing membrane, which is shown here in the yellow color. That's the waterproofing membrane. Uh, and as you can see, those gray layers eventually is the layers of Tenset. So uh, you will have that membrane covered with a layer of Tenset first, then the heating system will be installed. And then from there, really the rest of the layers would be pretty standard. As soon as the heating system is installed, you will apply more Tenset and install tiles on top. So uh, again, your main really difference here is that you building up some additional layers under the heating system to again, achieve that slope or achieve that waterproofing. And uh, once again, we are actually offering shower waterproofing kits uh, directly at Warmly Yours. So if you have questions on those, definitely uh, reach out to us or just go on, uh, uh, on the waterproofing kits right on our website. Awesome. Yes, we do have a lot of really good information on that website, kind of just as a plug right now. Um, they have pretty much all these cross sections, lots of videos, blog posts, trainings, things like that. So if you're interested or want more information, um, always feel free to check that out as well. So looking at um, an LVT cross section, this is where that self-leveling cement is really going to come in, into play. So again, you have that subfloor that is primed and clean and ready, and then your fixing strips, your cable, and then you'll notice the masking tape. And that is specifically to hold down the cables. You'll want to do this whether you're using the loose cable or the mats. Um, you want to make sure that they are attached well to the subfloor so that they don't float up and move around in that self-leveling cement. And then once that has dried and, um, you know, is compatible with any kind of moisture level requirements with the LVT, you can begin installing that. Yeah, one thing I can quickly point out on this particular slide is, uh, once again, sometimes you may run into this, uh, I, I call it two different um, installation manuals that you need to follow. So uh, your luxury vinyl tile uh, instruction or installation manual may say, yeah, it's a luxury vinyl tile. It can be floated over, uh, doesn't require thin set or you know anything in that nature. But at the same time, you need to follow the installation manual that is provided with our system. So if you're using a uh, temp zone type system that is always need to be embedded, you always want to make sure you install that cable or you, in, or you install that temp zone flex roll and you apply the layer of self-leveling cement first and it needs to be uh, at least three eighths of an inch thick. And only then after you have that surface ready, you eventually will then proceed and install your vinyl tiles as your manufacturer suggests. Absolutely. So glue down flooring. I am not super familiar with this one, Anatoly, so I'm going to pass it off to you. I want to make sure that we're getting the right information out about you know, yeah, gluing yeah. down that wood. Not a problem. That's, a, I would say, another pretty common way of uh, uh, you know flooring installation. In fact, uh, I actually just had a meeting for a large project this morning and uh, wood flooring is being used. So I think uh, one important thing to always point out, anytime you are planning to start a floor heating project or you are submitting some floor plans to us, uh, don't just indicate that it's a, gonna be a wood floor because there are at least three 
main ways on how that can be installed. You know, it could be a floating wood floor, it could be a glue down wood floor, which we're going to be covering right now, and it could be a nail down wood floor. The reason we want to know that information because uh, in with these three different methods of installation, we would actually need to quote three different products because eventually a floating system will get your floating environment heating mat. A uh, glue down system will typically uh, get the flex roll, but for a nail down system, you would need the cable. So always uh, share that information. That's very critical. But with this particular cross section, again, we starting uh, pretty simple. You want to have nice, uh, clean, uh, clean level subfloor. Uh, with subfloor, you want to prime it. You can go ahead with the temp zone flex roll, or it could be a cable. Doesn't really matter at this point but then you will uh, again cover it with a self-leveling cement minimum of three eighths of an inch thick make sure it's uh you know you're following the right uh, information that's listed on on the back to properly mix it make sure it's the right ratio you spread it correctly uh, and only when it's fully dried uh, that's where you will again switch to that other manual and start using your wood flooring manual to choose the proper flooring adhesive and choose the proper installation method. So again, start is, as you can, you will probably start to notice, the start for majority of the systems will be pretty similar, but then you just start applying that other installation manual uh, for your flooring. Yes, absolutely. So preparing a wood subfloor for a floating installation, um, this is really going to require minimal prepping. It does not take long and it's not difficult. Um, again, making sure that the floor is clean of any debris. And you'll also want to make sure that it's level and, you know, pretty much good to go. You want it to be a good base for your heating. And then from there, you're going to want to lay down a type of padding or underlayment. Um, we always recommend using our Cerazorb. Um, I thought that was the next slide. It's not. Um, we'll be going over Cerazorb in just a minute here, kind of talking about our synthetic cork and what we recommend um, when using it as an underlayment. So this is a good uh, cross section of what I believe we normally call a environ sandwich or something along those lines, um, where yeah. essentially, is that what we call it? Um, you're, if you're putting it on a wood subfloor, first you'll wanna lay down that underlayment. And for this, it's less about the insulation that it provides, although that is a, a bonus of the Cerazorb, um, but it's also going to protect the mat from, you know, as the floor shifts and moves, between the laminate and the wood, you're not going to have damage occur into that to that map. So you'll lay out your underlayment, your environ, that's the foil heating mat, and then from there you'll lay out that laminate flooring and float it across the top. Yeah, one thing to point out here, I feel like, of course, we're talking about specifically cross sections, so I'm trying not to take too much time about different installation techniques, no. but anytime we talking about uh, really any type of system, uh, make sure you are always providing us the uh, nice layout of the room with the exact dimensions, but also point out where there's any obstructions on the floor. So like things like heating vents or maybe some uh, posts or something that's going to be planned to be uh, there in the future, you know, just point it out for us. We uh, can provide you the proper layout and that way, uh, you know, you avoid any type of issue during that installation day. Absolutely. Yeah, anything to make it easier on yourself. Yep. So looking at a wood subfloor with a carpet installation. Now, this is only applicable in the states currently. Um, it's uh, safe according to the state's National Electric Code, so it's perfectly fine. You just want to make sure that, again, you're putting that padding down first. So you want that carpet padding on the wood subfloor and then your environ, and then very carefully you would install your carpet over the top. Yeah, typical simple cross section for environ and carpet installation. Uh, again, make sure that uh, I know most of the uh, instructions for, uh, again, either it's going to be carpet or some other floating floor, they may specify that the underlayment needs to be specifically under the flooring. But that's not the case in uh, the installations where you're actually trying to heat that floor. That's where you put, you start with the underlayment first 
then you put the heating system and then the flooring. You generally don't want to have anything in between your heating system, which in this case it's environment flex roll, and your flooring on top. Because as soon as you put something there, that's just going to trap the heat. That's going to slow down that heat from properly transferring into the floor. Yes, that is a very good point. You want to make sure that you're almost as close to the top of the flooring as you can be. So talking about a concrete subfloor now, if you're going to be doing a, an embedded system like that temp zone, um, again, it's similar to what we talked about earlier, making sure that it's clean, making sure that it's primed and level. Um, and then you also want to make sure that if there are any, you know, high spots, things like that, while doing the leveling, that you grind those down first to make sure that everything is a good, flat, smooth surface. Yeah, I'm going to repeat it one more time. Anytime you're working over, let's just say in this case, concrete subfloor, uh, could be maybe some older construction where, you know, things are not perfectly leveled. You want to make sure you leveling that uh, subfloor first before installing the heating system, just to, again, just to avoid that uneven heat. You don't want to have that, uh, let's say, corner of the room that for whatever reason is, uh, you know, slightly lower in slope. Uh, and that might be your high traffic area. You don't want to have that sis, that that corner filled with more leveling cement, and therefore eventually providing you that less heat or slower heat or lower temperature just because you know there's an inch of material over top of it versus just three eighths of an inch in uh, throughout the whole rest of the floor. So yeah, just pay attention for that and. Uh, uh, probably another situation we can quickly cover here is you might have some existing uh, flooring that uh, you are not planning to remove. Like, you know, either it's some older vinyl flooring or maybe it's an older tile that is in a good shape, but you're not just, you know, you're not removing that and you're planning a new flooring on top. That's the point where you just want to uh, work with the uh, self leveling or thin set manufacturer to choose the right product and choose the right preparation process to either scuff it out or, or send it out that surface so the adhesion will happen correctly. You don't wanna apply you know, your typical thin set over some kind of glossy uh, vinyl floor and then it's, you know, then it's just not really holding, you know, it's all popping out or something. So just make sure you follow that uh, with the uh, flooring company and with the uh, thin set or self leveling manufacturer. Yes, awesome. That's a good point. Okay, here's what I was talking about earlier for our Sarasorb. Um, I really love this picture. I think it shows a really good, you know, at just a glance how important Sarasorb is, specifically when going over a concrete slab. So concrete uh, definitely tends to act as kind of a heat sink. It wants to heat up first before it allows the heat to rise and, you know, kind of actually give you that comfort that you're looking for. Um, so you want to make sure that you're putting that barrier down so that the heat does rise normally. And you can see having Sarasorb is going to make upwards of, you know, four degrees of difference uh, just by installing it. So it's a very good product for insulation. It's very good at um, uh, areas for areas that are high humidity or high moisture because it is that synthetic cork it's not going to uh, mold or mildew or anything like that uh, so yeah it's going to really help boost the efficiency of that floor heating system it's not something you want to overlook or skip yeah sarasorp is again uh, i would call it must uh, have product for those installations over a concrete systems uh, especially if you know you are in you know you're in any any other climate than just your normal warm tropical climate that's where your you know cold concrete will just start to absorb that heat and uh, you don't want your to have your floor heating system working over time and using so much more energy to start bringing that uh, temperature to some comfortable levels. You pretty much the goal here with the Sarasorb is you're really trying to separate your slab, your concrete slab, from the layers uh, that include the floor heating. So they almost become, uh, you know, individual, right? Where the floor heating just heats the floor and it's not trying to heat the subfloor. Absolutely. 
So a concrete slab tile installation would look something like this. You have that subfloor that you obviously, again, want to make sure is prepared well, and then you would thin set your serazorb to that subfloor, lay out your tempstone flex roll, and then put thin set down and your tile. Yeah, very simple. Once again, uh, serazorb is the key here and uh, important uh, note to probably cover here is also, as you can see on the cross section, serazorb needs to be thin set it down to the subfloor. Yes. Uh, you don't want to have serazorb just floating over because if you started then installing rest of your layers, including tiles, technically you become uh, the whole installation above it becomes floating and you don't want to have your tiles sort of floating over top of your concrete. Yes, that is a very, very good point to keep in mind. So same concept uh, with LVT. The only difference, like we talked about earlier, is really what you do once the heat is down. So again, there's that slab. You'd lay out your thin set and serazorb, your heat. And then from there, you would do that self-leveling to the manufacturer's uh, specs for the LVT. And then once that's dry, you can lay out your LVT on top. I actually remember one more thing. We can t cover and talk a little bit about the LVT installation. So. Uh, as I mentioned a couple of times before, uh, from our uh, requirements, we want that self-leveling cement layer to be uh, at a minimum of 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, that doesn't mean you should just go ahead and pour 3 eighths of an inch and continue with the rest of your uh, flooring install because uh, there might be some flooring types or flooring uh, manufacturers that specifically will indicate that that embedded uh, floor heating needs to be covered or needs to be separated by half an inch of self-leveling. So sometimes that flooring company may just specify that value. And like we were talking before, just look into those instructions as well, because either the temperature or amount of separation will be indicated there. So that way you will do the installation right and comply with both of the requirements. Absolutely. So we haven't really touched on our uncoupling membrane very much. Can you tell us about Prodesso and kind of when it's best used? Yeah, so uncoupling membrane, just like the name itself, uh, stands for that uncoupling mechanism, right? Where you have uh, your flooring that will be sitting on the membrane with the, uh, you know, with a layer of thin set under it, will uh, have a little bit of separate or uncoupled movement uh, from the rest of the subfloor below. So uh, that's where you will follow the uh, Prodesso membrane installation instruction to choose the right uh, to choose the right uh, types of thin set depending on your subfloor and choose uh, the right installation method depending on you know how many layers of uh, plywood subfloor you have, what is your spacing for the joist, things like that will dictate the proper installation procedure. So definitely if you're planning uh, uh, to use this type of product or you know you made, uh, you know, you already have that uh, started or in your quotation, uh, definitely follow the installation manual or the cross section that we provide on our website to properly, uh, you know, do that installation right. Yes, absolutely. And we've said it before and it doesn't hurt to throw it out there again. We also are available. Uh, if you ever have questions, feel free to just reach out directly. So for a concrete subfloor, if you're going to be floating your heat or you're floating your flooring, um, the main thing is, again, that you want to have that insulating underlayment. That serosorb is going to be very important um, just by virtue of installing over a concrete slab. Um, so you can lay out your um, serosorb. Again, make sure that it is um, uh, completely thin set down so that the serosorb itself isn't floating. And then from there, you can lay out your environ. And that's not going to be attached to anything. Nothing should be attached to it. It's going to truly just float on that serosorb. And then you would lay out your uh, flooring over the top. One thing I will point out here for the floating installations, uh, you actually uh, don't need to thin set down your serosorb. You can just float it, tape it together, and tape the perimeter or corners just so it stays in place. That way your whole gotcha. installation, your serosorb, your environment, your floating uh, flooring on the top 
it all it all flows that's eventually how it's designed to so that only applies eventually in those floating systems everything else when you're doing embedded installation on top you would also thin set the stairs or below but anytime you hear the word floating and you're you know you're uh, your using environment system, which is floating, you then no longer really need to adhere that SARS or down. That is good information. I did not really fully know that. So thank you for clarifying. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of, I mean, it's kind of a fun, like you can think of Pennywise, like we all float, something like that. There's a joke in there. I'll find <laughs> it. So, come on. There we go. Um, with a carpet uh, on a concrete slab, again, the same concept, padding, lay out your environ, and then again, very carefully install your carpet over the top. Um, and this is only applicable currently in the States. Yep, just uh, eventually make sure that anytime you're doing that installation with the carpet over the concrete, just pick a, a good high quality padding uh, that will have a good R value. Pretty much the better insulation you're gonna get, the better performance and uh, efficiency of the system you're going to get. Yes, absolutely. And last but not least, our laminate cross section. Uh, again, same thing. This is very much a you know kind of true floating floor. This is what we see a lot of. So you'd lay out your serasorb on that slab, lay out your environ, and then your laminate right over the top. Yep, simple cross section. Love it. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're looking at if you're going to be doing a new construction, like a new uh, slab pour? Yeah, uh, anytime you're starting with a new slab uh, that's uh, not uh, poured yet, you actually have uh, two options or kind of two directions how you can uh, go with your floor heating. So if uh, uh, you are planning to use uh, the uh, that concrete slab, uh, let's just call it a polished concrete as your final flooring surface, you would definitely then use the slab heating system that I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, right now. But if you're planning to use the, uh, if you're planning to use any pretty much type of flooring on top of your newly poured concrete, that's where you have two ways of uh, handling that. You can install your heating system in the concrete as shown right here on that cross section or you can just finish your concrete and uh, pretty much do your embedded system like we were covering in uh, majority of the previous slides the main kind of difference the way i like to describe it the main difference would be is how you are planning to use that system so if you just it's it's a room that you know you're going to be just running you know, the floor heat in that room for maybe a few hours in the morning, few hours in the evening. So kind of short term uh, heat that you just need for a couple of hours. You're probably gonna benefit from having a floor heating over top of that concrete. So just like we showed before with the Cerasorb and the rest of embedded layers, because that will give uh, your system that quick efficiency you ramp up the temperature, it heats up, you use it, walk there for a couple of hours or so, then you shut it down and you know you didn't really use uh, a lot of energy. But if you're planning to maybe have that whole floor heating uh, acting as a primary heat source, or maybe it's the room that you would want to kind of keep it warm or keep the floor warm for a majority of the day, and you actually want to kind of structurally heat the whole house more or less, that's where it would be very beneficial to have that slab heating installation, the one you're seeing here. And uh, really uh, to cover that cross section, you want to have your heating system, which is of course separate specific heating system. We call it slab heating mats and cables. Those will need to be installed in the middle of your concrete pour. So you wanna have two to three inches of concrete below the system and about two to three inches of concrete on top of the system. So that way, once again, your heating element is in the middle of that pour. Absolutely, perfect. All right, Are we? do we have any questions? And I know we received a few earlier in advance, so we're going to be going over those. Feel free to think about any questions you have. And again, either in the sidebar chat or in that ask a question module at the bottom of the screen. Um, 
Our first question is from Kimberly. She asks, would warmly yours radiant floors be used instead of a water or PEX line that type system in a new home build? And the answer is definitely yes. Uh, either hydronic or electric systems, um, floor heating systems can be used in new construction. So it really comes down to, you know, kind of what you're looking for from the system, what kind of flooring you're going to be putting down, things like that. Yeah, that question is actually ties very nicely with that previous slide we were talking about, because yes. uh, if it's a new construction, once again, you can choose which direction you want to go and you don't need to choose that direction for the whole house. You may have potentially your whole first floor of the house uh, with the slab heat because that's the foundation. That's where you can actually install it. But then maybe your uh, second floor bedroom and bathroom might be just your typical embedded system with a quick heat for the time you just need it. And uh, that's really that really just makes the whole thing very efficient and you really not spending a ton of money on energy. You know, you're just using it when you need it. Awesome. Absolutely. Amy asks, can you install under hardwood? And yes, it depends again on, you know, you want to talk to the manufacturer about any limitations or requirements they have. And then you want to be sure that you're picking, you know, based on how you'll be installing that hardwood, um, the right system to make sure that it's going to be installed properly. Yeah, yeah, good question. And like we were talking, you know, somewhere, I believe, at the beginning of the presentation, just always share with us what the uh, what installation method you're planning to use. Uh, I can't remember if I actually shared that, but like your hardwood uh, manual or manufacturer, it actually can say that the system can be installed uh, floated, it can be floated, it can be nailed out, it can be uh, just glued down. And you may just start setting up your project or sharing the information with us uh, and, uh, you know, without identifying what installation method you're going to be using. Uh, and then on the day of the installation, your installer may just decide, I'm going to glue it down. But uh, you cannot do that over environ, for example. So just I know it's kind of could be a specific thing or a last minute thing that you're going to decide, but just share that with us ahead of time. We can always very quickly redesign the project. We can redesign and get you the right product, uh, you know, within 24 hours or less. So just share that part with us, because as you can see with the hardware, there are at least three different directions we can take here. Yes, yes, definitely be sure to be chatting with us about your project. And our last question uh, that was sent in advance is Pedro's. He asks about um, shower pans and electric heating in showers. So we kind of brushed over that a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, obviously, we do have the shower waterproofing kits. We do have shower heat so that is pre-sized, uh, pre-cut for a lot of standard showers. So depending on you know the shower size and how you're planning to install it, absolutely reach out to us and we can chat. Yeah, the, the, the interesting thing these days, there is just so many different ways of uh, just doing the shower floors. You know, you really, uh, we really all live in the era where we combine some really old school methods and technologies that could be like regionally specific. And there's some of these really new, amazing products that makes the shower installation very quick, very simple. So just, yeah, communicate with uh, your installer or with whoever's really dealing with the installation process, uh, communicate that information to us. That way we can figure out what product to use. We can figure out how to install it correctly and that way we are all covered. Awesome. So I don't see any other questions. If anything comes up while we finish up here, feel free to ask away. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. We do have our next webinar scheduled for April 13th. Again, it's a Thursday at 1 right here on, um, on Crowdcast. And it's going to be about creating a heated driveway with one of our snow melting systems. So I know, obviously, come April, none of us want to be thinking about snow, but it's a good time to start planning <laughs> ahead for next winter. So if you're curious, please oh, yeah. join us. And then we also offer daily trainings, again, right here on Crowdcast. Um, these are usually at least once a day, sometimes twice, and often hosted by me, hosted by Anatoly. Uh, and they're usually five to 10 minutes. So feel free to pop on in, learn a little bit, ask some questions. We're happy to chat. For March, we are offering 25% off of select towel warmers. So please visit our website to learn more about that promotion. 
And at the end of today's webinar, we'll send you an email shortly um, asking about your experience. So we would love to hear any comments, any suggestions. If you have topics you're interested in learning about, be sure to let us know. We want to make sure that, you know, we're doing this for you and giving you the information that you are looking for. And of course, you're always free to contact us. Please call us, email us, however is easiest for you. We want to make sure that you are completely confident and have all your questions answered going into working on whatever heating project you are going to be doing. Um, and of course, we had uh, mentioned earlier our website, lots and lots of information. So be sure to check that out as well. It's warmlyyears.com with two Ys. So that is, I believe, all that we have today. Thank you, Anatoly, for joining and co-hosting today's webinar. We always appreciate that tech side of things for sure. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. It was a good time. And uh, I hope you all uh, learned something new today. And if you want to, once again, if you want to learn anything new about our other products, just share that feedback. We want to start the webinar uh, and plan the webinar with the information that you really want to know. Absolutely. Yes. We want to make sure you're in, you're learning things you want to learn, not things that we think you should learn. So until next time, uh, stay warm, be radiant, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>